Erectile dysfunction can raise its ugly little head at any age in a man's life. We especially worry if you start to develop symptoms of ED before the age of 50 or 60 because of the things I'm gonna to talk to you about in this important video. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you seven causes of erectile dysfunction that you can control and ultimately fix. Penile erection in human beings is, is very complicated process, but it, you can really boil it down to the function of your arteries, the function of your veins, and the function of your nerves. And you can never forget the, uh, the, the factor that your big head plays in this process. Anything that damages the inner lining of your arteries or your veins or the arteries and veins ability to expand and constrict is going to cause problems ultimately with erectile dysfunction. Anything that damages the conduction and the surface of your nerves is ultimately going to lead to increasing symptoms of ED. There are very, very many causes of erectile dysfunction, but in this video, I wanna focus on seven common causes that you can actually change. You can actually get rid of these causes and improve the erectile dysfunction you may be beginning to suffer with. So let's talk about these seven causes. Number one, and so uh, to be a little more precise, some of these things don't literally cause erectile dysfunction but they are caused by the same thing that's causing your erectile dysfunction. So when you make changes in your life that fixes this thing, it's also gonna help improve your ED symptoms as well. So you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So number one is elevated triglycerides. Now, anytime you're starting to have a repetitive pattern of erectile dysfunction, one of the very first things you need to do is go see your doctor and say, hey, I'm having trouble downstairs. What's going on with me? Do I have a medical condition? And you need to get a lot of lab work checked. You need a good thorough history and physical exam. And one of the things the doctor might find on your lab results is that you have high triglycerides. So again, high triglycerides do not directly cause erectile dysfunction, but the same thing that's causing your triglycerides to be high is also damaging the arteries and nerves and veins in your penis and um, plumbing, so to speak, that's leading to your erectile dysfunction. So the way you're gonna fix high triglycerides is you're going to convert your current diet, whatever it is, into a low carb diet, a ketogenic diet, or maybe even a carnivore diet. By lowering your carbohydrate intake, your triglycerides are gonna go back to normal and you'll notice an improvement in your erectile dysfunction as well. The number two common cause of ED that you can actually change is low testosterone. Now, not everyone who has erectile dysfunction has low testosterone, but they are very tightly associated and people with low T are very likely to have at least some degree of ED. And so make sure that's one of the tests your doctor checks when you go see him or her. And if you have low testosterone, then you need to get your testosterone optimized in a bioidentical manner. The number three common cause is high blood sugar or blood glucose. Now again, having high blood glucose uh, somewhat directly causes your ED, but also the thing that caused your blood glucose be, to be high is what's really ultimately leading to your ED symptoms. So you've got to correct your high blood sugar. You've got to fix that. And the way you're going to do that is by lowering the amount of carbohydrates in your diet. Anytime you eat a high carbohydrate meal, your blood sugar is going to spike and you're going to do damage to the arteries, the veins, and the nerves that uh, are in charge of erection status, and that's gonna lead to erectile dysfunction ultimately. So if your blood sugar is running high, you gotta fix that, and it's easy to do by changing your diet. The number four thing is high blood pressure. High blood pressure is disastrous on your arteries and also does damage to the nerves as well. For most people, 80 to 90% of people with high blood pressure, the reason that they have high blood pressure is not because they're eating too much salt. It's because they're eating too many carbohydrates. This is keeping their insulin level high. 
Insulin is making them hold on to an extra five to 15 pounds of fluid, and that's making their blood pressure go up. So by converting to a low carb keto carnivore diet, you're gonna give your blood pressure a chance to follow your insulin as they return to normal. Your blood pressure is gonna come down too, and all that damage that you were doing to your penile arteries is going to slowly but surely get better and go away. The next common cause of erectile dysfunction, which is completely under your control, is smoking. The same way smoking clogs up your heart arteries and leads to a heart attack, it also will clog up other arteries below the belt and lead to erectile dysfunction. You've got to quit smoking. You've got to quit using tobacco. Uh, research is kind of equivocal on is it nicotine or is it the other junk that's in the tobacco product that you're currently addicted to. Uh, a lot of the research seems to imply it's probably not the nicotine causing the damage, it's the other crap. So if you're a smoker right now and you're having ED trouble, stop smoking. The next common cause of ED is being overweight or being obese. Now, just like with triglycerides, being obese doesn't literally directly cause erectile dysfunction. But the, the process, the metabolic syndrome that's happening in your body that's leading to obesity is also leading to erectile dysfunction symptoms. So again, by lowering your carbohydrate intake, especially the ultra-processed junk carbs, get rid of all those and convert your diet to a low-carb keto carnivore diet, you're going to lower your blood sugar. You're going to lower your insulin levels. This is going to allow you to burn off fat, get rid of inflammation, and ultimately your ED symptoms will improve. The next common cause of erectile dysfunction is, remember I mentioned the big head earlier? So we're talking about anxiety, depression, and stress. So this, uh, I don't want you to go and blindly jump on a prescription medication from your doctor for anxiety or depression because many of those medications, as I'll talk about in the next common cause, can actually lead to erectile dysfunction. So try to understand and realize that it's how you react to life's challenges that basically determines whether you have anxiety, depression, or stress. Uh, there are people who live in million dollar houses who have the perfect life and they have severe anxiety and depression. There were people in the Nazi concentration camps who didn't have anxiety and depression and were pretty much stress free. If, if that doesn't make any sense to you, then you need to re-examine and say, how do I react to the stresses and the bad things in life? Because it's not the bad things that give you anxiety and depression, it's how you react to them using cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, using meditation, using massage therapy, uh, make sure you're getting plenty of sleep, you, and make, make sure you're getting morning sun. All of these things can decrease your anxiety, depression, and kind of take the big head out of the equation so that the erectile dysfunction symptoms lessen. Now, the last common cause of erectile dysfunction that I'm gonna talk about today that you can absolutely reverse and get out of your life is certain medications. So pretty much any street drug that you buy down on the corner has a chance of causing erectile dysfunction. All the uppers, all the downers, all that junk is going to damage arteries, damage veins, damage nerves, and has a high likelihood of leaving you with some degree of erectile dysfunction. But there are a long, long list of prescription medications that even though you may be taking them appropriately, as, as prescribed, they can still greatly increase your chance of having erectile dysfunction. And I wanna talk about the most common ones of those today, but I'm thinking about making a, an entire other video about all of the medications that can lead to erectile dysfunction, because there's a lot of them. But the most common medications that can lead to erectile dysfunctions are the benzodiazepines. This would be Valium, Ativan, uh, Xanax, all of these can lead to erectile dysfunction. The SSRIs like Prozac, um, like Effexor, like Paxil and Zoloft, all of these in some people can lead to quite severe erectile dysfunctions. Uh, as far as blood pressure and heart medications go, the most common culprits are the beta blocker medications. So any heart or blood pressure medicine that ends in the last two letters, OL, like metoprolol, betalol, 
uh, sotalol, anything like that is going to increase your risk of erectile dysfunctions. And then also the fluid pill known as HCTZ or hydrochlorothiazide. It messes around with your hormones a little bit and can lead to uh, disastrous erectile dysfunction. As I said earlier, there are hundreds of causes of erectile dysfunction, and I'll probably be making videos about those in the future on this channel. So if you haven't already done so, please consider clicking the subscribe button and the little bell button right beside it so that you can enjoy those videos too and learn from them. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.